Good evening. Welcome to Sonar Feed. <laughs> Today is November 20th, 2017. What episode is this? 223. We're live from the Berliner Pub in Renton. It's ahead of the curve. If you talked any quieter, I wouldn't be able to hear you, and I'm like four feet away from you. You should get headphones. <laughs> <laughs> if I had headphones... Anyway... Well, oh, you could so there louder than you was inside. There not, was there not a rest to that? I mean, maybe. Oh, okay. I can't hear Anyways, you. Anyways, this is so. episode 223-ish. Uh, w- w- we're going to discuss the Sherman Act with our special guest host here, Mickey Turner. That's it. That's all we're talking <laughs> Literally about Literally just the Sherman Act. There is going to be test at the end. He's actually going to read the entire Sherman Act? It's actually only like two paragraphs. So yeah, it's I was going to say, long. I don't think it's Perfect, because I have a short attention span. So, anyway, <laughs> welcome to the show, <laughs> episode 223, here at the lovely Berliner in where, Mark? Renton, Washington. It's ahead of the curve. It's ahead of the curve. Anyway, so we are joined here tonight by the wonderful Mickey Turner. Good evening, everyone. He is at Turner ESQ on the Twitters. Which I just figured out what that stood for. <laughs> and I am really How a smart person. You tweeted him, Mickey, like 500? <laughs> At least. He earlier was Where'd like... you go to school there? Yeah, I went to Washington okay. State. Okay. Go okay. Kazoo. Okay. Anyway. Uh, by the way, you will not hear any trash talk out of me this week because I know better. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, so on this end, on the right side of the screen, um, Tom Biro, a.k.a. Bougie Hooli. To my right, as we just mentioned, is Mickey Turner... A.K.A. Turner ESQ. And to his right, I am Mark, A.K.A. SFSC Fody 13. Be good if you got your own Twitter handle correct. Right? So, God, you should see me logged in on that app and try and type. Shit. You type? Well, I sure don't <laughs> swipe. Not trying to call Mickey goofy. Anyway. So we've got a few things we'll talk about tonight. There's actually <coughs> soccer this week, which finally I don't even understand what that means. Uh, but there's a Sounders match tomorrow, so we'll dig in and do a little bit of preview on that in a bit. Uh, I think we wanted to chat with Mickey, who, if you've been following on Twitter for the last month, month, month and plus, a half, yeah, yeah uh, has been spending a decent amount of time. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, delving into various uh, soccer-related lawsuits. Um, so he is going to share a little bit of his insights, uh, intel, thoughts, whatever we can get out of him tonight. By the way, uh, if, if you have any complaints about the video or audio, be sure to let Adam know as he is on an airplane right now. To Vegas. He to loves Vegas. that. Tweeted him right now. He, he actually is online commenting. Is he? I, I see that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Hi, Adam. So, oh, there he flying. Is. awesome. I'll see if I can fix it from this airplane. Look how cool he thinks he is with that little check there. What does that mean? I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but I have a crown. He's Twitter verified. No. I have a I have a crown. <laughs> Which means <coughs> he's either super famous or not a Nazi. <laughs> now he <laughs> means he's not a Nazi. I mean, 2 weeks ago could have could have been, you know, could have been. So, uh anyway, uh, so welcome to the show. So we'll dig into the Sherman Act, <laughs> among other things. Uh, we'll preview a little bit of Sounders. We'll talk about some things that have been going on. I mean, it's mostly injury updates and a little bit of other, you know, random MLS and league and soccer things uh, of note. So uh, why don't we dig into Sounders a little bit later? Because um, I think we've, we've all briefly offline, offline recapped a little bit here. Um, Dave Clark is vacuuming at home, and he says this is better than sonar feed. I mean, it's it's louder. It kind of sounds like it sucks. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, um, Mickey, for those that don't know who you are, yeah. what you do, uh, you know, the, give a little bit of the intro, um, and then you know, tell us. Let's talk a little bit about you for a bit, and then we can go from there. Yeah, sure. Uh, so I'm a Sounders fan, obviously, season ticket holder uh, for about six years now. Uh, and I'm an attorney, as you can probably guess by my Twitter handle, uh, and have been uh, practicing in the uh, King Pierce County area since like 2003. 
Uh, oh, and there's, uh, I told some of my friends from the East Coast uh, that I was going to be on, and they're starting to troll as it, uh, awesome. as it appears, so that'll, I'll enjoy that, actually. Is that who DC Lance? Yeah, that is uh, DC Lance. Uh, my, and uh, uh, Eddie from Ecuador <laughs> yeah, is so messaging. Those, those, those would be he, uh, yeah. the two people that will be uh, submitting uh, it, it unfortunate comments. It could be because you're in Ecuador? Yeah. He wow. is actually, you well, know, <laughs> He may or may <laughs> not be having trouble with the service right now, but... <laughs> yeah. That's oh wow, he's he is full on in. Yeah. He, and has, he's a, he this is week, my so. uh, college roommate, uh, and so I went down to visit him actually last summer. So that was pretty fun. Nice. nice. Yeah. So oh anyway, so I uh, went to school on the East Coast as you uh, can probably guess, uh, and then moved out here and uh, been practicing out here. And like I said, Sunders fan for quite some time now, and. Uh, Kind of just got interested in the legal aspect of what's been going on in U.S. soccer uh, since the lawsuit was filed uh, from uh, NASL back in, well, I guess it was September. Yeah. Um, and been kind of following along as far and as that's Had concerned. you been tracking, let's say, previous things that had been brought up uh, before that lawsuit? Like, there were threats and there, were, there was all sorts of things. And NASL has been mm-hmm. talking trash for years, frankly. Yeah, uh, uh, obviously I didn't have any of the documentation sure uh, so i wasn't following along to that extent but obviously i was following along uh just because i'm an interested soccer fan yeah. and interested in seeing how the period is ultimately going to shake out um and so you know following along and seeing that nasl has been having problems with u.s soccer they obviously want to challenge mls and uh they had their own problems so i guess i started really following along last december when nasl almost went out of business yeah uh, and uh, was that like the 18th time? Yeah, I can't keep track. Well, but. yeah, there was that unfortunate uh, time in the 80s. Yes, uh, <laughs> and so well, back in December, then they really almost went on business. I, you know, they were, I think, a fax away from yeah. folding up shop. Um, and then they got saved uh, by uh, the Cosmos. Got an owner came in, saved, saved them, and then they got a reprieve from U.S. Soccer, um, and then. Both NASL and USL got provisional Division Two status, which is, uh, I'm sure everyone who's listening to this knows what that is, but it basically, you know, MLS is num- um, Division One, USL and NASL are Division Two. There is no Division Three at the moment, uh, and that's kind of where we are currently um, until the lawsuit was filed. Right. When uh, USSF in December, or not, in August, decided that uh, NASL wasn't complying with the... Uh, the standards and they didn't see a prospect that they were going to anytime soon. And so they pulled the rug out from under them and basically said, we're not sanctioning you D2. You can apply D3 if you want to. Um, and then NASL followed the lawsuit. But prior to, you know, even at that point, I had not done any real research into what was behind going on behind the scenes. Okay. Um, and so that's kind of where, uh, when the lawsuit was filed, I realized that the court that it was filed in, I had access to all of some the, of the stuff. Yeah, all okay. of the good stuff, all the pleadings, um, the complaints, all of the background documents, and so I just happened to check one day, and uh, so your spare time, yeah. was mm-hmm. now not spare yeah. anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, once you started, you know, getting, uh, once I started digging in, it just kept. I just went down a rabbit hole, and it was yeah. just. Yeah, so much paperwork, so many filings, so many letters, emails, and you just realized uh, after reading it all that just how much these sides hate each other. It is, yeah. uh, you know, when you get to the lawsuit stage, that's usually what happens. I mean, yeah. you've, <laughs> but, you've tried to have your back channel conversation mm-hmm. by that point. Mm-hmm. Um, how much time did you spend at this point just kind of getting yourself up to speed and... Yeah, because I'm not a, I'm not a antitrust lawyer by um, by practice. I mean, I've done some general practice. I've you know had some federal cases, uh, but you know nothing nothing along those lines. So you know, I spent a fair amount of time just educating myself on the Sherman Act. You know, I had basic knowledge, um, and you know, I uh, I was a intern for the NFLPA coming uh, while I was in law school. So I have some background, uh, you know, in sports law. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, that wasn't really my practice. So um, I spent, you know, a couple of Saturdays just, you know, kind of digging through paperwork 
um, and just uh, reading up on the Sherman Act and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's, it's fascinating. It's dry, but it's, you know, it's fascinating. Uh, and like I said, once you started really digging in, it's just, you're just going back from, from the point they filed the lawsuit in uh, September of this year, and you can go back to uh, 2015, and that's really when you could just see that there was just a hostility that didn't exist prior to that point. Because, uh, you know, NASL, in both ways, yeah, in, in both, both directions, yeah, both directions. Um, because prior to that, um, NASL broke off from USL, uh, because they didn't, they weren't, they wanted to challenge MLS number one, right? Um, and they didn't really agree with where USL was, was headed, uh, and so they broke off into their own separate uh league and they both applied, uh, or they applied to get into division two and they didn't really qualify, and so they kind of did some stuff and they and at that point they got embroiled with traffic mm -hmm. which is a whole other thing most of traffic is on trial for corruption or yeah. racketeering or whatever it was and you know some people went to jail so all the fun stuff yeah it was it was quite interesting reading about that stuff too but like i said you could just you know from the point when nsl emerged from usl to about 2014 there was a reasonable amicable working relationship with u.s soccer and then 2015 is really when things just went downhill. And that was the point where NASL was trying to uh, go after Division One status. They applied for Division One, even though they didn't really meet Division Two. Right. They just, they, at that point, I think they decided that U.S. soccer was not an organization that was dealing fairly with them. And then that's where you kind of get into their complaints in the lawsuit. So are they applying for, for D1 and other things? Is that they're well aware of what the result is likely going to be? Is that just how they say we've explored every avenue to do any possible mm -hmm. thing and have always hit a wall? Like, is it intentional at that point? Well, going back to 2015 when they applied for Division One again, they didn't qualify really right. for that. But the, from when they initially requested D1, to when they got a response was about nine months. Okay. Uh, USF kept saying, before we can do anything, you need to get out from under traffic. Okay. Um, and it took NASL, I don't think they actually got out from under traffic until October of 2016. So it was a good year and a half before okay. they even were able to extricate themselves from traffic. So US, uh, US soccer wasn't gonna give them division one. No matter, no matter what. what. Yeah. Right. But there was a long, there were long delays, which really annoyed NASL because they thought the traffic thing was a sideshow um, or a distraction and that they should still be able to go after, uh, you know, Division One status. And again, ultimately, I think the issue is, is that NASL does not believe that U.S. soccer should be in the business of sanctioning leagues for divisions. Right. That's what I really think is underlying this whole thing. Um, well, aside from that, and they think that U.S. soccer is corrupt and in bed with MLS and some. Well, I mean, there's MLS, there's <laughs> some, some, there's U.S. soccer, and they're, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they are in bed with each other. Right. Uh, to, you know, because they have a financial interest through some. Uh, whether that shows that there is a conspiracy to hold NASL down or to restrain right. trade or kill NASL, there's not evidence of that yet. And that's so is where, this where the Sherman Act comes into play. Yeah, and not to get too dry, but it basically means uh, you are you are conspiring with another organization to restrain the trade of a third organization, which means U.S. Soccer and MLS, through their some organization, are conspiring to keep NASL down. That's essentially what it comes down to. I okay. fixed it. Oh, yeah, we look much more pretty. Thanks, Mark. I did, did a, a thing. producer thing. I did a thing. So is Sherman Act, again, you sort of gave the, the quick, uh, maybe even better than Cliff's Notes version. <laughs> um, Sherman Act, is this a thing that other people should, or people should be familiar with from other situations? Is this what gets cited when people bring up the NFL? Oh, yeah. And um, other this is when uh, uh, NFL was sued under the certain Sherman Act by Trump, I think, and the uh, uh, USFL. That, yes, that, USFL. USFL. Yeah. And actually... Uh, Which was a great joke by uh, 
Lynch's mom earlier today. Oh, I missed it. About the NFL not letting him have a team. Oh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, he wanted he wanted in uh, uh, to the NFL through the U.S. Well, he wanted in through he wanted to buy the Bills, I think. But yeah, um, in the '80s, he sued uh, under the Sherman Act, saying that um, NFL was conspiring to restrain trade. And he actually won that. Right. But they were already out of business at that point, right. so and he won, I think, a dollar sixty-seven, I believe. And uh, I think it, with interest, it's up to about three dollars now. Awesome. And they sent it. They actually sent a check. I think it's never been cashed, actually. So, That's it, so funny. there are precedents for organizations suing yeah. um, in the sports realm uh, over an uh, over antitrust violations. And that's issues. typically what would get used. Yeah, is the Sherman Act specifically? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, you know, again, you're not an antitrust lawyer. <laughs> There's probably an initialism for that that you could <laughs> use on the Twitters. <laughs> but, like, do you? What's your What's your take? What's your opinion? Yeah. So. I wrote up a story on Senator Hart uh, after they had the argument to get the injunction, I guess rolling it back. NASL basically wanted the court to order U.S. soccer to give them Division II sanctioning. Okay. And that's what they sued for. So basically, once U.S. soccer said, we're not giving you Division II sanctioning, you can apply for D3, you, uh, NASL sued and said, U.S. soccer you're restraining trade through the, your conspiracy with MLS and some. It's wrong you're doing that. While we pursue that lawsuit, we need Division II sanctioning or we're going to not be able to survive. Attract teams. Yeah, so yeah. because you know, you can't attract teams as a Division Three league. Uh, you know, players won't want to play you know, for Division III. Yep. Uh, all sorts of things, uh, all sorts of financial uh, burdens will, will accrue. Uh, and so they sued for the preliminary injunction. They had that hearing on the 11th uh, of October. I think it was the 11th of October. Um, and basically what they were arguing is they argued like obviously like 15 different things. But basically they said that uh, U.S. soccer and, and some are, uh, cons uh, are in a conspiracy. We can prove that conspiracy. Uh, we'll go out of business if we don't get this. Uh, there's no real harm to U.S. soccer for getting, if they are forced to give us this right. uh, Division Two sanctioning, and there's a good public policy against you know allowing this kind of action to come into place, and there's one more thing which I'm forgetting, but uh, basically the court agreed with NASL on three of the four major arguments. Okay. However, the court did not agree that NASL could prove basically the conspiracy based on the evidence before them. Uh, because there, it was all, it's basically circumstantial is what it comes down to. There was no smoking gun. There was no uh, email between Don Garber and Sunil saying, this is how we're going to screw NASL. We'll get them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, no voicemail where they talk about how they're going to keep NSL down. No, no whistleblower, uh, you know, writing a declaration saying I'm, I was a party to these yeah. conversations. They didn't have that particular claim. And so that's essentially where their request for the injunction failed. And, okay. And the court basically said, without that element, without being able to show that you're substantially likely to, uh, to succeed on that element, you are not, I can't grant the injunction. And the problem, the reason that, even though they won three out of the four claims but still lost, is because they were, uh, the court determined that they were asking uh, the court to affirmatively force U.S. soccer to give them D2, as opposed to preventing U.S. soccer from taking it away. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. So they're asking the court to give them something they don't have, as opposed to asking the court to prevent something from being taken away. And when that happened, it's a higher burden. It basically became, as opposed to jumping over a hurdle, you have to do a high jump. Okay. And that it's just a higher standard. It's tough to reach. And that's essentially why they lost. Different types of proof, more proof. Yeah, whatever. you just have to you have to prove you're substantially likely to succeed in the ultimate case. Okay. To get the injunction because you're getting you're getting up front, you're getting the benefit that you are asking for at the end. Right. And so if you're if you're asking to get what you are ultimately suing for early, right, you have to show that you're going to win. And the court said that they couldn't prove that so on which, that particular which, count. So Seems what, fair that it should, mm -hmm. the burden should be on the plaintiff yeah. to prove the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, the problem is on the conspiracy, 
they there isn't enough evidence at this point based on what has been presented to the court. A lot of it, is, a lot of the stuff that the NSL uh, provided were newspaper clippings between Sunil saying that we have a good working relationship with MLS, uh, but you know that shows that they have a working relationship. That doesn't show that they're. Um, engaged in any action right. to hold NASL down. There's nothing that says, hey, we're trying to screw you. Yeah. Right. Like and your then, friends are going to make video of this mm -hmm. and make it sound like you Ooh. think that you're an antitrust attorney. Like that's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> and there'll be like a Mickey Turner. YouTube Especially now that channel. I cleaned up the video. Right. Perfect. They're now that you can actually no tell it's Mickey and not, um, not yeah. just this so, blob of person. So I think there's a lot of directions to go from here, mm -hmm. but so what is it, where are we at? What does this mean? All right, so now there's an appeal. Uh, uh, NASL appealed like with less than 24 hours after getting the, the ruling, which I thought was Shock pretty amusing. shocking. Didn't you say that you were expecting it to take longer? No, no that's a different case. That was, oh, okay. Um, oh, it, you're right. That was, that was the Miami That Miami yeah. thing. Uh, they had like 30 days to file this appeal, but obviously time was of the essence for them. So I expected them to uh, file the appeal. I did not expect them to file the appeal less than 24 hours of, after <laughs> getting the ruling. Uh, but my guess is that they were preparing for right, any eventuality. Um, and so there's an appeal uh, set for the 15th of December. Uh, NASL has already filed their, their appeal documents, basically explaining all the reasons why the judge was wrong in making her decision. Uh, I don't want to really get I into mean, that. Does this it's, go it's, up it, a level of court yeah, yeah, now? Yes, like yeah, the Court that? of Appeals. Okay. Okay. Um, and you know, if they lose that, in theory, they could appeal to the Supreme Court. Uh, they probably appeal to a full panel in the appeals court. Uh, but you know, in theory, they could go to the Supreme Court. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's an interesting case because there's not a lot of on the Oh, the, I guess I should say the other reason uh, they didn't prevail is because they couldn't prove that there was, and I, again, I hesitate to get into this because it's kind of convoluted, but the court found that they had uh, irreparable harm because based on their claim, if they don't get D2 and they go out of business, that's they're out pretty, of business. <laughs> yeah, they're out it's of business. That's, harm. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're done. But you also have to prove, um, the issue is you have to either prove that you're clearly likely to proceed or that there's this an extreme serious harm, which okay. is there's not case really any case law to distinguish those what those two things mean. So you know ultimately there may be some new law that's made out of this case. Okay. Uh, but anyway, they're appealing on that ground. They're appealing this that the, wrong, the judge was wrong on the on the facts of the case on the law, and so there's a whole bunch of things that they are asking the uh, appeals court to reconsider. Uh, and uh, that hearing set for the fifteenth. Uh, the U.S. Soccer's uh, reply or response is due tomorrow, uh, so we'll get that tomorrow. So I'll be digging in on that uh, as long as it doesn't occur during the Sounders game. Uh, you know, it's coming out at like five fifty-four. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I know Pacific. it usually does. It usually yeah. is the last absolute last minute. Um, and then so you get fuel tomorrow. Live yes. court rule court filings <laughs> with Mickey. I already, already said I'm not going to be looking at that stuff uh, while the Saunders are playing. Um, and then NASL gets to file a reply uh, next week. And then the okay. hearing is on the 15th, which I guess is in three weeks or so. Um, and at that point, if U.S. If NASL wins, uh, likely they will be granted the Division II sanctioning. It could be remanded to re-argue whatever issues the court uh, appeals court finds are problematic. But if they get their D2, then they can start to, you know, proceed on their uh, merry way to get uh, NASL up and running for 2017 or 2018. Because right now they only have seven teams because uh, North Carolina has gone to USL. Right. Uh, so they have the Florida teams and a couple of those, right? Yeah, they have. Well, they have one Florida team, I think, right so now. I think or it's my, actually, it's Miami and Jacksonville. The, the Rowdies. Yeah. No, the Rowdies are in USL now. Oh shit! Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they went there last year. Oh, I'm uh, a little bit ahead of time. The deltas are probably the going deltas out of business. are probably. they are most likely going out of business. Right. There is a chance they could get saved, but you know we're talking single digit percentage right. probably. Um, and then Edmonton is supposedly going to CPL, but uh, I guess the Canadian Premier League is not probably starting up until 2019 at the earliest, which means they will probably push for NASL to continue. Okay. Um, so they don't have, they don't even have eight teams right now, which is the bare minimum 
uh, for like a starting out Division Two league. So they, but they have, according to their documents, they have six teams that they're trying to bring up uh, through lower levels. Um, and then there's two California teams that are going to be there. So I think they're down to like six. They've got the two California teams that gets them up to eight, I, I think. And then there's six other teams that they're bringing up from the lower leagues, which would get them to 14 or so. So, but those six teams, most of them are going to need league assistance to survive. They don't have the money. So they're going right. to be... Not league owned, but league subsidized. Well, national travel and go so on. Like, <laughs> just such a different situation than, and that's where I think USL mm-hmm. uh, maybe not proactively is pitching itself, mm-hmm. but that's why teams are like, why would I want to be flying to San Francisco mm-hmm. or all the way up the east and down the east coast when I could be playing regionally? for the better part of my season in something competitive yeah. or what they see well, as competitive in the yeah, NSL. The bottom line is that the NSL just does not agree with the business plan uh, or the philosophy of the USL or MLS. So they don't want anything to do with them, really. Um, so the travel issues are really secondary to just they do not agree with the business philosophy um, or just the setup of Major League Soccer or USL. So they, you know, they are, I think, Based on what I've heard, uh, they are willing to fight this thing out uh, to the end. Um, I've had I have a little bit of background information, nothing that I can disclose as far as my uh, sourcing, but uh, there is not I there was talk of a settlement. I do not believe that there's at least at this point a chance of a settlement. Maybe you know as you get closer to the appeals process or the appeal being heard, maybe cooler here to prevail. And they are able to come up with a settlement, but they were apparently talking about a settlement last week, um, and it, the talks fell apart. Um, and like I said, I, I've heard a few things um, on the grapevine that uh, don't make it likely that there's going to be a settlement in this case. But again, it could change um, because we are talking about uh, the death of a league potentially right. if they don't. I guess, like, are we in a situation where you, know, you talked a lot about a, a handful of teams that will need, you know, league assistance or whatever you want to call that? Um, yeah. You will have far better ways to describe it than I will. But uh, is this a situation where you have the uh, the Cosmos owners or, you know, one or two other groups of folks with some deep pockets just literally go around to their friends and family with deep pockets to say, hey, we need to keep this alive? Like, or are we two steps past that already? Uh, I think based on, uh, and this isn't any background information, this is just based on what's out there. Uh, there's a couple of owners in the NASL who are planning, were, are planning to just front money to those six NPS, their NPSL teams are basically semi-pro or, um, honestly, I'm, I'm not sure on their exact designation, right. but they are not in. They are not currently in a position to, you know, to pay what they need to pay to be in an, an NASL, a Division Two NASL. Okay. So uh, I, bl- I believe what I've heard is that uh, the Cosmos owner and probably the Miami FC owner uh, are willing to basically front that money uh, to get those teams up and running. For how long they would need to do that is is a question, and that kind of goes back to what the settlement was about, uh, based on what is out there in SL is asking for three guaranteed years of D2. Uh, and then after the third year, they have to meet whatever benchmarks are set up by NAS or by the U.S. Soccer Federation. Uh, U.S. Soccer Federation apparently was asking for one, which seems to be just not something that is a realistic uh, marker for NASL to reach. Because if they're floating six teams for a year and have to come up with separate ownerships for all of those, in a year, in an event, yeah, that's not going to happen. That's, yeah. Um, so that's that's just not something that is realistic. Uh, obviously, U.S. Soccer doesn't want to have this thing dragging on for three years, where NASL is kind of you know, you know, whatever you think about how U.S. Soccer has handled things, and there's the judge definitely found that there were some questionable things going on between U.S. Soccer and some. Um, and not MLS directly, they didn't, uh, but, you know, that's the implication is that MLS is a part of that. Um, so whatever you think of what U.S. Soccer's done, ASL's is not done a great job of establishing stability. 
Um, part of that was due to their issues with traffic, mm -hmm. and then part of that was due to what happened last uh, December when they almost went out of business. Uh, but that's kind of where we're at, where a year is just not something that is realistic. And uh, But U.S. soccer obviously has things they don't want coming out in this case, right. uh, which is when when the start case starts to go to trial, uh, the first thing that NASL is going to ask for is discovery emails. Which, yeah, yeah, which is going to be give me all your correspondences from uh, yourselves and MLS uh, since you created some back in two thousand two, uh, and they'll probably get some version of all of that information at some point. The issue is, will NASL be a, an organization by that point? Uh, by the time that's going to happen, uh, because my guess is uh, they would probably get a ruling on uh, the appeal. If the hearing's on the 15th uh, on an expedited track, you're probably looking at a ruling within a week or so. Okay. So that's right around Christmas, uh, Christmas time. Uh, and if it's a adverse ruling, then NASL basically has to, you know, because the other thing is currently NASL is not does not have any division sanctioning at this point because they're not di sanctioned division two and they declined to apply for division three. Yeah. And I suppose they could apply for division three, but they've expressed number one, no interest in doing that. And number two, I think the time for doing so has probably passed. And even if the time hasn't passed, I struggle to think that they're going to be able to get all of that stuff together by January. So we're looking pretty yeah. slim pickings right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I read a, an article today on the, I think it's like the Orlando City blog, The mm -hmm. Mainland. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were just talking about how all of this affects the Florida teams uh, mm -hmm. because they have some in multiple tiers and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, that was flat out what was said was NASL has zero interest it's, in going down a tier, no, and that's not during their ability to get anybody to want to mm -hmm. team up with them if they thought yeah. they were going to have to play tier three. Yeah, yeah, tier three is it's just not going to happen. Um, so their their options are basically win the appeal or come to a settlement uh, okay. and get Division two sanctioning. Uh, and if this if the uh, if the settlement talks have broken down to the extent. I'm being told they have, uh, then it's you're you're just hanging your hanging your hopes on the uh, on the 15th, which again is is still really late. But again, uh, last year they didn't get sanctioned for 2017 until January. Right. Uh, so they, I guess, in theory, still have some time. But if they don't get, they have to get that moving to start getting their you know those those other teams brought back up and they still need to find a replacement for NCF's uh, North Carolina. Right. Um, I'll take another one um, for North Carolina and the Deltas. Cause again, right now they have six and then you have Edmonton who will probably stay because right. I, you know, they want to go to the Canadian premier league, but that league's not starting till 2019. It appears. So they've got, they've got six right now. And if they bring up the six MPSL teams, uh, that gets them to 12. And then, uh, well, I guess the two California teams as well. So I guess in the 14. So at this point, uh, do, do you think the goal, do you think the people that are behind the NASL are just mm -hmm. genuinely straight up trying to have another league that has the Cosmos and a couple of these other, mm -hmm. you know, teams like, you know, s some that have had history, mm -hmm. some that don't. Um, or is there genuinely like money behind a lot of this that mm. is intent on taking down USSF? <laughs> so, like, really? Yeah, I think could there, be. there uh, is definitely a animus uh, behind this whole thing um, towards U.S. soccer and some and MLS, um, and so I think absolutely they would like to open the books on those organizations um, and, you know, I don't know, t take them down as the uh, no, proper, I mean, but they want, they want some transparency. Let's put okay. it that way. So like genuinely for soccer or mm -hmm. as like, 
punishment for how they've been treated. Uh, I think it's probably yeah, it's probably a little bit of both. Okay, I mean, I think I think they in their uh, deepest dark, darkest uh, moments are uh, uh, they would uh, admit that they uh, they want to you know take MLS not ML, well yeah I guess MLS and US Soccer down a notch. Yeah, um, because again, reading all this stuff back from 2015, you could just tell that the denial of getting Division One at that point is just something that really rankles them. Um, they think, again, I, my, my sense is that they don't think U.S. soccer should be re- uh, regulating anybody at all. Uh, you know, this, not to get too deep in the weeds, but, you know, uh, the Stevens Act is the thing that kind of gives U.S. soccer what authority it does have. And basically, that was basically for the Olympics, mm-hmm. amateur sports, because they just realized, you know, with, you know, competing globally, someone has to kind of regulate the soccer, amateur soccer. Sure. And so they gave them that authority. And uh, the argument has been, well, that is great. Uh, that gives you the authority to regulate uh, Olympics and amateur soccer. Uh, it doesn't give you the uh, authority to regulate professional soccer in the United States. Uh, and there is a, a that's a, a legal argument to make. It's, it, it probably has some merit behind it. Um, and that, that's part of what they are fighting for ultimately yeah. um, is to make, and that's in their complaint. They want to have it established that U.S. soccer does not have the authority to uh, sanction leagues. And that should be basically left to the leagues and the leagues should you know, sanction their own members and you know, establish standards for their own members. Um, and uh, that issue has never been fully litigated because the, uh, it's been litigated, I think, on like three separate occasions. Um, but um, every time it's either been settled before it got to that point, uh, or it was uh, one of them was dismissed on a technicality. Um, so that issue has not fully been litigated. But this judge was not agreeable. She did not agree with the NASL's theory that U.S. soccer does not have the authority to regulate. So I just repeatedly they tried to walk that, uh, make that argument. The judge challenged them every time, and NASL would back down because. For whatever reason, the judge was not buying that argument, whether she thought that the, you know, again, not to get too uh, dry, but whether she thought that the Stevens Act granted U.S. soccer that authority or they, she thought that U.S. soccer was granted that authority through their affiliation with FIFA and that everyone basically had agreed yeah. to be uh, submitted to U.S. soccer. She was just not agreeing with the theory that U.S. soccer does not have the ability to establish divisions and establish who goes where. So... You know, that and is that's an issue that ASL is, um, is ultimately going for in this lawsuit. Um, but they, but they, in some way, want it as not a byproduct, but like part of the decision from the court. At this point, they want to be that. But their goal is obviously they want where they they want to be where they want to be from a tier perspective. Mm-hmm. But it's not like they're gonna let's say lose part of their case. But a judge is just going to decide that U.S. soccer has no ability to make those decisions. That's not going to be decided in this injunction period. That's for the ultimate trial on the case. Uh, This is just a do you have a do you have something that warrants us taking this to trial? Yeah, is really where we're at. Yeah, uh, right now where we're at is, yeah, I mean the case. The judge agrees that there are issues for NASL to pursue as far as a potential conspiracy uh, to restrain trade uh, and the, by the action of um, NAS, or uh-huh. U.S. Uh, soccer and some in MLS. And she's like, you, there is a plausible claim here, but I can't say that you're clearly likely to prevail on it so that I can give you an injunction. Right. And so, you know, this, there's, uh, I guess I should say that U.S. soccer has fi- uh, is in the process of filing a motion for summary judgment, which basically means toss the whole thing out. But that's what's put on hold with the appeal. Right. But that that is something that will be, if the case continues, will be argued sometime in the new year. Okay. Okay. So let's, I, I want to pick your brain on one more thing kind of related to this, and then we okay. can dig into Sounders and some <laughs> other fun stuff. Um, this is fun for you. So yeah, I think yeah. it's very interesting. I think we've been talking about it for a few days, and we're like, oh, okay, this would be really cool. We want to talk mm. to Mickey at some point. So this is, I think it worked mm. out break-wise. Um, uh, it's really no secret, if you can kind of read between the lines, um, that some of what happened with S2, um, among other things with USL teams, uh, is related 
Absolutely. Directly or indirectly. I would say directly. To this. Um, no one is admitting as such uh, or such, but uh, that does appear to be related. Yeah. Um, do you have any just thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. Kind of what we're going to see maybe th- going forward? Yeah. Clearly, the, I think in it, or the U.S. soccer, m- maybe in part, just got tired of all the parties not complying with the division uh, standards. That's probably part of it. Part of it is probably protecting for this lawsuit. Okay. Talk about standards for a second, yeah. if, right, so, yeah. if you understand. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, division, I don't have the standards right in front of me, but division uh, one, for example, you have to have a minimum amount of teams. I think it's 14. There might be 16. Uh, you have to be in certain time zones, uh, Pacific, Central, and Eastern. Okay. Uh, you have to be in certain geographical areas. Uh, it's like 750,000 people have to be in the cities that you're putting teams okay. in. Um, there obviously have, there are standards with regards to financial security, uh, owners at the net owner net worth, uh, that kind of thing. And so obviously division one has the highest standards, uh, division two has the second highest standards and, uh, there is no division three. So I guess we'll put that aside for the moment. Right. Um, so division, uh, two, has oh and there and there's a lot of other things that are not uh, what are called league standards or team standards. Basically, your coaches have to be licensed at a certain level. Okay. Uh, your fields have to be a certain length and width. Uh, certain turf quality. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, stadium stadium sizes. That's Size. another one okay. that's really rankles. Which uh, is probably NASL. the one that we're talking about a lot yes. here yes. when we're talking about USL or specifically yeah. S two. Yeah. So division two, uh, minimum five thousand. Um, and that's obviously where a number of – that's why you've seen a lot of movement in the last three months. Uh, yeah, and it's no coincidence. It's because this lawsuit yeah. um, has happened. And, uh, I, again, to be fair to U.S. soccer, they did basically tell you uh, – well, they told both parties at the beginning of the year, we're provisionally sanctioning you D2, and you need to get your house in order and do X, Y, and Z. Um, and, when, and when they came back in September – they both came back and said, here's what we've done and here's how we plan to get into compliance. And ASL did not fail to, or did not pass the test according to U.S. soccer. U, um, in, uh, US, USL did not pass either. They, they had all the waivers of all time. Yeah, or something they, they like had that. 20 waivers they needed. Um, they claim that they're all team specific, which again re, uh, relates to coaching, right. field sizes and, and stuff like that. Um, and so what uh, NASL or what U.S. Soccer said was, all right, we'll give you another 30 days to basically fix everything. And then it's no coincidence at that point you started seeing Vancouver Whitecaps go away. Right. And uh, Bethlehem Steel has done some stuff. And as it relates to Sounders fans, it's the Sounders moving down to Tacoma because Starfire clearly is not a suitable stadium site to comply with the standards. And, you know, uh, Sounders 2 was heading to Tacoma before this, but I am convinced they wouldn't be there this year if this stuff... Accelerated just yeah, a little. Yeah, accelerated, yeah. So okay. that's why I'm... You know, that's, it's all related yeah. at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, cool. That's really helpful. I know mm-hmm. I, I attempt to be educated on these <laughs> things, but I have nowhere near the legal knowledge that you do. Mm-hmm. So um, Mark said he actually was going to study. I have the messages. I, I, he was going to study up so he didn't sound like a total idiot, idiot on the show tonight. Instead, he's just chosen to <laughs> read tweets <or> like, <laughs> while we've been sitting here. Hey, Mark. Hi. That's a nice blue sticker you've got on your It's hat. actually tape. Blue tape. Fuck the NFL. What's that for? Fuck the NFL. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you really feel? I, I think how I summed it up. doing? Uh, it sounds like they're losing. Still. Ha uh-huh. ha. Bummer. Glad oh, we're not wow. downtown. It's going to be a riot. Mm-hmm. 3123. Awesome. Oh, they're close ish. They'll probably they'll probably get that two point conversion and so make it awkward. So Matt Uford on Twitter from SB Nation posted a picture of what's called Disappointment Island and it's his tweet is when you deserve to lose. And I had to retweet it saying, this island is actually in the Puget Sound. Wow. Okay. Go Seattle Sports. That's, that maybe not wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to yeah. be. But Hi. Have we met? But okay. Uh, anyway. This evening on NPR. Let's talk about 
some sounders for a second. <laughs> yes. Um, there's going to be a quiz later, so everybody here in attendance, get on your Sherman Act quiz. Max Aquino, I see you in the back. He's open. Editing. He's trying to do open book. He's editing right photos. Now. Probably is editing photos of something awesome. Nice. Er- that guy's pretty I had cool. a question, and then he said James World Willard, and I had to pocket that question real quick. <laughs> wow. All right, we're just going to move yeah, on move quite a long from semester. here. So, so tomorrow, I, I don't even remember the last time the Sounders played. I think, I think it was this month. No, it was the second. Second, right? November 2nd? Yeah, seriously. Feels like forever ago it's been uh, crazy. and um so tomorrow somehow uh at 6 48 pacific time is reportedly official kick because so, it's fox right yeah, i believe it when i see it so uh, we get that who knows i can only i don't know well either yes, what it, yeah. fs1 i was gonna say that's days. when we always get those effed up Yes. Kickoff time. So 6.30 is official TV, which means they'll give us 15 to 18 minutes of oh. talking about stuff. Um, maybe they'll bring in Joe Buck just to make it fun. Can we not? <laughs> Sounds like the worst I'm idea I'm sure he's really ever. good at soccer. Um, so, so quick high-level stuff, scanning the wonderful world of Sounder at Heart. Uh, Dynamo come in, uh, three wins, two draws in their last five. Sounders come in with three wins, one draw, one loss. Whole lot of goals for Sounders. Nine, two given up, and six and one for Dynamo. But if I recall it, at either of these either of these teams away has not defeated the other team. Total. So while that means draws are an option. <laughs> If we're going to get a win, it's going to be the first time anybody's done it in a minute. So, interesting point. Um, Houston is still on my list of places that I will go to last, if at all yeah. possible. Still. Uh, oh, still. still. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> and um, my, Columbus yeah. is fighting really <laughs> hard to come off the penultimate spot on that list. Um, every other year, I think they alternate or something because I want no part of that. But um, so Sounders coming up tomorrow. Um, they've obviously had a ton of time to get healthy. Um, no one got dramatically injured on um, international breaks. Uh, Gustav Svensson's team is going to the World Cup. So that's cool. S- side note. Yes. How about that video the Sounders put out with Stefan Fry narrating? Because I don't know about yeah. you. But I watched that like 15 times, and each time I was just like, hmm, we got to win. I really like the, uh, the Twitter clip where they were just doing like sizzle reel and slow-mo, and the one part of Roman Torres, it's the security the guy. The security <laughs> one. <laughs> <Wanting it. laughs> and I was like, why even bother? He's just going to run over you. See, and that's, matter. they actually were headed into the stadium at CenturyLink to pick up their bags. Wow. That's awful. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, so Sounders tomorrow. Um, you know, I, I don't think we need to get any hardcore analysis, mm-hmm. but any sort of thoughts? I'm fairly confident. I think I told you off uh, off air. You did that. You said twelve one. <laughs> twelve one. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that seems that seems about right. Say that, but <laughs> we'll take it. Twelve one. I I nine penalties. <laughs> I have a <laughs> feeling like I. This break was good. I feel like they've got the swagger. They don't seem like they're overly like, well, we've done this before. We're just going to do it again. It's genuinely, we know we have a job to do, and let's go in and do it, and let's make the home match fun. Sure. Yeah. Which I like. So you're okay with like one one, and then they win four nothing at home? Uh, I, no, I'd prefer us win four one down there, and then get four a one, one at one. home as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, fuck it. Let's yeah. do it. Eight yeah. two. Yeah, want no part of that. I think the thing I'll be interested in is if uh, Victor plays. Yep. Uh, or starts, I should say. I wouldn't be surprised if he plays. Um, if he starts, and they put Joven back at uh, left back. Uh, 
So that's obviously a much more offensive lineup. Or sure. if he's a little more conservative and goes with Nihu in the back uh, with Jones moving up to the wing. Uh, and if they just, you know, take it easy with Victor since he is coming off an injury. Uh, so I don't know. I'm not sure which one they go with. What's well, a? I mean, it's a little bit of a luxury to have, I guess. You're like, oh, I guess maybe we'll play New Who. What are your thoughts on uh, JMO? Do you start him or do you do you keep him on the bench? Uh, do him as did a he even sub? Travel? Do we have any evidence he actually traveled? And it wasn't I, in the video clips. Yeah, I didn't see his didn't see picture. Him. I didn't see any pictures of him in the. Uh, do, they do you think tweets? we hold him another week? We it's, could go uh, check I, Bread's it, Twitter feed. Yeah. Because I remember Dave saying that he looked good early last week like was full in in training and then he was not in training like a day or two later so he was kind of up and down on whether he was uh what his status was um you know it was a serious injury obviously uh so it's tough to say uh i don't think he starts i don't think there's any way he starts okay uh but i you know if he if he's there if he traveled then he's probably gonna be in the 18. Um, which would be a nice uh, thing to have on the uh, on the bench, but I don't think there's any way he starts. I just don't think that's yeah. I my gut says gonna no. Um, I I could see him in the 18. Okay, uh, but on the other hand, I think sitting on him a week is gonna be just fine too. Yeah. Um, I, and and more in, than in doing that, uh, yeah. in doing that, you get him a little more rest. Yeah. A little more recovery. And then if uh, well, if all is looking good, right, then he's set for uh, December. Yeah, I, I just think you, you know, you get in a, a spot where he is ready tomorrow, but you have another eighteen players. <laughs> Maybe you just let him sit, and you're like, okay, he's ready. That way too, he's he's all recuperated for our next two years of friendlies that we're going to have for the U.S. team. Nice. Um, speaking of bread, uh, went to bread's Twitter account immediately. Yes. Was greeted by. Pancakes, blue and He's green. Making. Yeah, yeah. So shout out to carbs. Is yes. that in a cast iron? And um, it it does not appear to be cast iron. No, and it's not a glass top. Mm, uh, it's one of those. It's got one of those like weird, like grayish charcoal color burners. So it's sort of like so a glass. Top. Sort of glass top, but uh, we'll critique. We should have Derek weigh in on that. Breads. No, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk breads. <laughs> Bread's cooking mm. tactics again another day. Um, okay, but so I think the rest of our lineup basically s- sort of know it. You, you yeah, know, chalk, yeah, basically. yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's some decent examples. I, I know I saw this one, and it's pretty obvious. I mean, Fry Jones, Marshall, Torres, Leardum, Svensson, Roldan, Rodriguez, Dempsey, Ladero, Bruin. That sounds like a lineup. I, think, okay. I don't want to fuck with. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, like two years ago, if you were like, "Here's your lineup," you'd be like, "Who up. are five of those players?" <laughs> and then you'd be like, "Oh, that guy plays in Spain, and that guy." Oh, okay. Yes, I will accept <laughs> that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's. It's either whether they put Jones in the back or move him up and put Nuhu there, and if they hold off on Victor, that's really the only surprise to me. I can't. I don't see them. Ozzy's obviously out, uh, he's been and, prob- and possibly out for the foreseeable yeah. future. I'm, from what I read, it, it doesn't look all that promising for him to be back. But and that's a thing that actually is probably worth derailing a little bit here for a second. If Ozzy's out for the duration right now, mm-hmm. what do you do there? Because I know what you do in every other sport mm-hmm. is he's there's a, a higher chance he is not on your squad. Oh, next, next year. Season. Or uh, at least, you know, well, higher than there is right now. Well, uh, he is, I know this, he signed through 2018. Right. Uh, and it's not an option, so they either... He's here for the moment. Unless they buy him out. Yep. Uh, or, if, I don't even know if he can be left uh, for the expansion draft, because there's that thing with the DPs, DPs and no yeah. trade clauses. I don't know if he has one. Although, uh, they were trying to trade him, so I assume he doesn't have a no trade clause. They, were, they were They were right. trying to trade him like two years ago or three years ago. So I assume he doesn't have a no trade clause. We heard that was a rumor spread by his agent. <laughs> that, that, yeah. that I trust everything yeah. an agent says. I mean, you <laughs> should not do that. <laughs> anyway. So. But, you know, Garth confirmed that he's there through 2018. So if either they buy him out or they trade him. Or I'm going to be leave super him for okay the expansion draft. with healthy Ozzy next year. Yeah. That may be but I would happens. like to see Ian. destructive Ozzy 
now in the playoffs. Yeah, <laughs> now. So you know, there was a point this year where playing without Ozzy, you could see a, a difference. Yeah, and you were like, oh, because there have been hell three seasons now where we, he's out for three games, and you're like, wow, they might as well not even be the same team. <laughs> Did yeah. we sign a guy that that things just sort of turned around? I I don't remember. It's yeah. He's from uh, Sweden. Maybe. Yeah. Oh well, him too. I, I was thinking. More of the the which, the Leardum, Leardum oh, status. Well, yeah. That guy's pretty good. Yes. He is the one that um, ECS people enjoy doing the mm. whoa mm. on the throw-ins. <laughs> <and> <laughs> yes, yes. Capos get real mad, <laughs> but really? it's funny because it's accurate. <laughs> there was so, but that first you could tell that first two matches. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Players had no idea. Holy he's shit! He's put the ball yeah. in the box like yeah. Brad Evans yeah. style. They're like, Brad, "What is this?" Brad's at like the half line, and he's putting the ball <laughs> in. I don't know how he does that. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I could hit Max with the ball <laughs> from here and feel pretty good <laughs> about it. <laughs> and Max is like, I don't know, twelve feet away. Judging, so, judging by some of the crosses that you tried to make to me, I don't think that's true. Wow, <laughs> that's Dude, that was like a little public. bit of a deep cut. That's a deep cut. Yeah, deep cut. Mark hurting himself in public. That's a deep cut. I'll tell you that. Usually I didn't hurt myself. Other people hurt me. Yeah. Actually true. We're like, kick the ball to Mark. Doesn't do anything with it. Kick the ball in front of Mark so he runs onto it. Doesn't do anything with it. What do you do? What do you do? Drive you to public. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, you you didn't get my speed reference, and I'm really disappointed right now. So uh, let's talk predictions. Oh, for the game. Gosh. Uh, Ooh, like I said, boy. I'm pretty confident. I could see a 2-1 Sounders victory. I don't think we keep them off the board uh, at home, at their place. Uh, but I, I just feel confident that we basically have our starting lineup that we would want. Yeah. Save Morris and, well, I guess Ozzy, but I think Svensson and Roldan. Our, our, is bench, mid, our bench midfield. on that is good, yeah. yeah. Vincent and rolled in in the midfield. It's you know fully confident that they can you know run things. So well, I'm thinking two one two one. Mark, what do you got? Uh, I'm gonna go uh, my my brother that's not here, uh, Liam. He does every every time a couple days before games. He does his little ships log. Which, check it out on Twitter, Liam the Merce. They're fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna go with we're gonna hold no quarter and uh, three nil. And we're going to extend Fry's uh, scoreless, Three nothing scoreless that would playoff be a party streak. Doesn't he need like sixteen Romans minutes? Next yeah, week. like <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> like, uh, but okay. but let's let's go ahead and add another ninety. <laughs> I mean, uh, okay. I um, I'm I think I'm with Mickey. I I think two one is a good score. I do think you feel really good about them right now. I think yeah. they've made. They've ended up making a uh, you know keeper change for yeah. certain reasons recently. They have some injuries on the back There's some line. Some other stuff. There's half a bazillion players that are out next match if they take a yellow. Uh, although the Sounders have three or four of their own, so there's that going on. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting factors in this game. Uh, yeah, I would say like Deuce Bruin. Kubo Torres, probably. Yeah. Do you think we'll see a little robot? I think you're <laughs> definitely going to see robot, <laughs> and I hate to say that you're probably going to see the robot first. Mm. So Ugh, yeah. that's that's the mm. take there. Um, I actually don't mind Kubo. I think he's entertaining. I think he's fine. Yeah. Stefan, Stefan, if you're listening, yeah. Stefan, if you're listening. Mm. Shut Tom the Did fuck up. Did they just get a two-point conversion? Or they scored. And tie the game? Mm. I don't even want to know. Mm. Something happened. Yay, uh, hand egg. Okay. okay. Hand eggs. Okay. Um, anyway, so... Yeah. I mean, I, the only thing I could... Uh, as long as they're disciplined and, you know, they got they got hit pretty hard in that first game, but I think that's more that they didn't know what Houston was about. No no one knew. A- and, and they you know, as to their as credit, Houston. they played they played a hell of a hell of a game. So well, and good on Houston for they usually do that weird beginning of the season and then are a disaster. <laughs> 
and then continue being a disaster. Yeah. And this year they were like, nope, we're going to be pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good. Um, and so they they've a, hung yeah. on, yeah. which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they have, whether you like them or not, um, they have what a lot of teams in MLS and in other leagues have is you go there and you don't really beat them. Yeah. In their mm-hmm. home, on their home turf. So I think the things obviously we have are the experience advantage and uh, a couple of their, uh, their Hondurans are coming back from yeah. uh, Australia. And so, you know, do they all start? Uh, they probably do because it's a championship, uh, you know, game. So, by the way, good day, Brendan. Who's in New Zealand right Where now? Where is he right now? He's in Auckland. He was. In I saw Sydney. him earlier saying that he was getting his like ozone hole uh, tan on sunburn. Right yeah, now. sunburn. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's over. I think Australia. it's moved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also heard that it got smaller recently. Yeah, yeah. the ozone. Those yeah, it's yeah. it's because we we started uh, getting more coal, <laughs> clean coal, clean coal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we got a bit of time more. Sorry. Um, was that the clean coal you were choking on? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. <clears throat> this is, by the way, I'm just going to say the first show that Mark has ordered hmm. one beer. I, I had two before we got here. Oh, okay. Never mind. <laughs> I rescind my <laughs> comment. Um, so let's uh, ask fun questions. Absolutely. Because you're a fun guy. Yeah. Um, Mark's probably not paying attention. Mm-hmm. So I, I heard fun guy. And if you were a mushroom, what kind of mushroom would you be? Oh. Uh, that Mushrooms is, out. Yeah. I'm, I, that is. Uh, just pass. That, yeah. That is awful. Not, I, not, I, not they're even, my least favorite. Uh, not even like Mario fungus. and be like, mushroom. It is a fungus, wow. and I, I, I that, is, uh, that would be purgatory do 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 do. for me. <laughs> uh, favorite Girl Scout cookie? Uh, I got to go with the Thin Mints. Yes. I'll take uh, this. Here, I got I to gotta end the show. End <laughs> show over. <laughs> Mark, you're up. <laughs> uh, favorite thing that you've purchased recently that was under $100? <sighs> See, I should have... Seen these coming, and your Avo with- your Avo subscription doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what was not less than a hundred dollars? That <laughs> the Avo to Avo subscription. Yeah. <laughs> uh, f- well, I guess the the Sounders replica ring doesn't really count. Did you buy an extra one? No. You know what? Uh, We're gonna count it. Uh. We're gonna count it. We yeah. just went to the judges. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like how you. Thing is great. I love. He's that all thing. pensive over there, like thinking about this. He's like, you know, yeah. I'm okay I'm with, this, right with, with this with this conversation. Right. Uh, Tupac or Biggie? Oh, that's uh, Tupac for sure. Okay, West Coast guy. I was in. I remember I was in college when he uh, passed. When the news he passed away. Yeah. I was in my uh, apartment and just, yeah, almost broke down sobbing. It was yeah. Really good. yeah. Uh, he was one. Of, yeah, he was my favorite artist. Were you Richmond time. like all the way? Like co- as far as college, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Richmond Spiders. That's We've discussed this right. a number of times. I have seen you get fuel, put the Richmond <laughs> Spiders on television. Mm-hmm. So well done, awesome. Mm-hmm. Tip your bartenders. I have, yeah. So I've traveled to uh, a fair amount of Richmond games. I went to uh, in the early 2010s when they were really good. I went out to uh, Atlantic City where they were holding the uh, the A10 tournament. Uh-huh. Uh, so that was pretty fun. Uh, and so I've traveled uh, far and wide to see them play. So, so they are my definitely my basketball team. Now that we do not have one in the uh, in the professional ranks in the uh, city of Seattle. Mark, it's your turn. Do you want me to get you the list? Uh, no, 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 no. I've been on this show enough that I I know the Are you sure? questions. Uh, we could tell by <laughs> what was this. This is for Lisa, who is in. Austin, which is sort of near Houston. I guess she'll find her way to Houston tomorrow. I mean, they're both in Texas. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite book that you last read? Oh. <laughs> or your uh, favorite book? Uh, there was a great book that I read, which I cannot remember the name of, but it was on the split of Yugoslavia. Uh, in the, it, was, yeah, it was just a kind of a history of... And I can't remember the name of it, unfortunately. But that's definitely it was a definitely a fascinating book. That does I sound fascinating, actually. Yeah. 
That was an interesting time because we grew up yeah. in that time. Yeah. So it was always on the news. Yeah. Dude, there was a car called the Yugo. Like, yeah. let's just go there. Yeah. Al- also, it's probably like half of the Ubers in anyway, the Czech Republic right anyway. now. Anyway. Uh, favorite taco? Oh, I love a good shrimp taco. Shrimp? Yeah. Really? My favorite. Good call. I, you know, I, grew, oh. I went to law school in San Diego oh, okay. when they were getting you know fairly popular. Uh, and so, you know, you just had the Baja feel with the you know, grilled yeah. shrimp. And then, uh, so those are definitely my favorite. I mean, I do love a good sidewalk taco in Tijuana. Uh, and you just go there at like three o'clock in the morning after you were done uh, uh, having a few drinks. And it was like four for <laughs> That's a That's actually what Mark would do. Yeah. Oh, they were Mark great. In San they were great. Diego. I'm pretty sure we did that in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> We definitely did that. Taco mm. time, squeeze yeah, the but, uh, chicken. If, I, if, if someone puts a good shrimp taco in front of me, that's that's it. That's the best one. Time. Absolutely. Okay. Nice. Good one. Well, I we'll I that. see Megan here was yelling at me. Tacos, mm-hmm. yeah. Mark. <laughs> we took care of it. <laughs> oh fuck! I made that statement of oh I know them all and then blank. I love this dead air. Yeah, no, right. It's great. <laughs> Do you want me to go again? Feed me a question. Um, uh, historical figures. If you could be in a bouncy house with a historical figure, who would it be? Uh, I would say uh, Abraham Lincoln, because I get some good air on those bouncy houses. Damn. Hell yeah, you would. <laughs> Hell That's yeah, you would. Good answer. <laughs> Abraham yes. Lincoln comes up a lot because people like him as a historical figure. Yeah. But, but in yeah, a he's bouncy six house, four. yeah, you just uh, he's got <laughs> it going. Now, does he wear the top hat while he's oh, in the bouncy better. house? Better. Yeah, he's got it. Tom, I actually kind of would like to know who you would want to be in a bouncy house with. Oh, wow, because I don't think we've ever covered this. I don't think we have. Um, man, there are so many really good options. Um, I'm gonna say grimace. <laughs> from McDonald <laughs> McDonald Land <laughs> Grimace because he's kind of fun <laughs> and really for that same reason yeah, he's so kind of bottom heavy yes. but like he mm. just hits the ground and, and you're like, Tom Whoa! doesn't even smoke weed yeah Grimace <laughs> he's not a historical figure but he is yeah, historical from my childhood <laughs> uh, no I, I would say actual bounce house person uh, wow, that's a really good question yeah, I kind of figured that'd be a tough one for you. Yeah, I just there are so many good historical figures. I'll go, and I got to think of some that like don't have weapons. I'll, I'll go. Yeah, it was a weird one, Stanley Kubrick. Wow, because that would be a weird as fuck bounce session. That actually sounds super awkward. That does actually. You're right. Yeah. There would be a really cool movie about it later, though. It would be like two and a half hours yeah. and have like 50 minutes of just straight dialogue. And then a milk bar. <laughs> yeah. And then something awkward would happen. Um, in the milk bar. In the milk bar. Yeah. That's, wow, that's a really good one. I'm going to go with uh, Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. Because he's super awesome. Like, incredible he person. He would just be interesting like, to talk to, and genuinely, I think he would find being in a bounce house fun. Yeah, yeah. but like as like a human, <laughs> as strikes, a human. But yeah. that's what I mean. Like just, he strikes me as somebody who's like serious when he wants to be, but like you put him in the moment, and he's mm. like, "Oh my gosh, I'm in a bounce house." Like Bill Murray would be a good one. Oh my god. Oh bar. Jesus! Yeah. But you'd Bill have to Murray. you'd have to be smoking <laughs> weed for that one. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> Bill Murray. Uh now I'm derailed. <laughs> I had other questions. and uh, What about Bill Pullman? Bill Pullman. Oh. You mean the president? I need the aliens version. <laughs> aliens? Is that the, is Pullman or Paxton? I always get those guys confused. Oh, yeah. Paxton. That's, I meant Paxton. Twister. Bill Paxton. Twister. Yeah. So, like, if you had Bill Pullman and Bill Paxton. <laughs> I'd go Paxton for sure. You'd go Paxton because oh, yeah. you were guaranteed a good ride. Yeah. And you'd go mm. Pullman because he would negotiate. I, I don't think you'd be guaranteed a good ride because how many times did it take him to get the daisy up in the air? <laughs> we just got that's, really, 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 that, really, that's, really. That's deep. Like that's nine deep into that really's, movie's 
specific. <laughs> Next on the show, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> I, I don't even know where to go right now, but um, favorite travel memory for Sounders? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. I like that. Um, I would say I've been to, you know, I've been, to, I've done LA like, about 12 All times, times, 12 yeah. times. Fire, fire chief? Yes, fire chief. Oh, no so. one's ever had one of those or taken their glassware home. Do you mean a game memory or just... Just, ah, just a favorite travel memory. Uh, I'll give you a, uh, an interesting one. Uh, so it was the, I think it was the 2010 playoffs. Uh, and it was the one where uh, Drew Carey brought out the... Uh, Oh, the bar at the yeah. uh, what you call it? I can't remember the name of the bar. Uh, well, he actually didn't buy it out. They thought he bought it out, yes. uh, but I think he actually said he was only going to pay like a thousand dollars, some amount of money. yeah, some amount yeah. of money. Uh, and what happened before that? Uh, I was with uh, my brother and uh, like three of our friends in our hotel room, and we uh, were making some drinks. And we were about to head down to the bar on, on the uh, Redondo Pier. And so we were like, oh, we'll just take our drinks with us. Uh, so we are walking. And it's only like, uh, it's like three, yeah, it's about four or five blocks away. Uh, so we're walking, just having our drinks. And like six of Redondo Police's finest roll up on us as we're walking with, with, with our solo cups. I like drop mine in the trash container and my two friends were just like, oh, well, we're screwed here. So they uh, they roll up on us because, you know, I guess they had nothing better to do on a uh, Saturday uh, Saturday night. Please tell me they were on bikes. Oh, no, they, they were full out in their, their squad cars Dang. and there's like five, four or five of them. Uh, so we're just sitting there on the sidewalk, basically like, oh, we're going to get arrested for drinking in public. Open container. Yeah, open container. Yeah. So they uh, wait. That's not legal everywhere. Unfor- well, that was what they uh, told us. It, uh, you're it, not in Vegas. It is in Pullman. From that one, it is a good quote. Yeah. And we were just like, well, you know, we're just, you know, we're from out of town. Uh, we're here for the Sounders game. Yeah, and they're, they're actually pretty nice. And they so started talking to us about what we were doing and stuff like that. And they're just like, you guys, don't be idiots. Uh, yeah, you know, don't drink and walk on the road. And so they they let us go. They didn't cite us or anything. But then we went down and. Uh, you know, partied it up for the rest of the night, and Drew Carey bought out the bar, and it was just, it was, it was a fun night. That was a fun night, except for the almost getting arrested part. Allegedly, <laughs> allegedly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think the statute of limitations has passed. You're probably okay now, <laughs> Mark. What do you got? If you could travel anywhere that you've never been before, where would it be? Oof. Um, well, I got one of my my uh, bucket lists out last summer uh, when I went to Ecuador. Um, because we went to the Galapagos, so that was awesome. Um, so I kind of I'm on a South American kind of kick at the moment. So I think I'd like to do Peru and go to Machu Picchu. Yeah, and I like uh, your style, check sir. the ruins out there. Yeah. So that's probably number one on my list. Um, yeah, uh, that's probably number one on my list. Uh, I did uh, Europe, so uh, Africa would probably be number two. Uh, uh, you know, go to like a reserve game reserve or something like that. Right. Just, uh, observe the animals and maybe pick off a poacher or two. I nice. like it. I like it. Um, those are still legal to bring home, right? The poachers. Poachers. You yeah. can poach the poachers as a trophy. And bring them home as a trophy, and then it's yeah. okay. It sounds like a great, perfect, In great theory, idea to me. If it's a Trump. <laughs> person <laughs> you probably shouldn't do it <laughs> but well cool. no they're not allowed in my house uh what advice would you go back and give i don't know how old you are uh, let's 40, say 16, 16 year old you year old you 25 year old me yeah uh, I, would go, I would go younger uh let's let's go 19 19 year old mickey shit just got real uh-oh did they really and i was talking they about just this tied it up with i think mickey, but so 19-year-old you. 19-year-old me. Pro- oh, I, I've got uh, probably... I have several responses. <laughs> yes. Well, the main one, and I guess I would stretch this to like 22-year-old me. Okay. Um, is to... No, no, they missed the field goal. <laughs> 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 uh, sorry, Seahawks fans. Oh, so they're going to lose. Is that the... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. 
Um, 22, uh, to continue with my Spanish, because I was fairly mm. fluent when uh, I was in college. I did like a study abroad in Costa Rica. Uh, and so by the end of it, I was very fluent, or not very fluent, but I was, I was pretty fluent. Um, but I just didn't continue on with it. So that, that's, my, that's the advice I give so myself. Stick to Spanish. Stick to Spanish and okay. to continue to be fluent. Okay. That'll do. Mark, it's your turn. Like, oh, shit. Mm. Shit! Um, I should have gotten on the list. Yeah, <laughs> you should have gotten me on the list. <laughs> if you were Pete Carroll, would you still be playing Blair Walsh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kidding. That's yeah. not actually a serious question. Is that too soon? Yeah, too soon. <laughs> Literally too soon. Too soon. Yes. <laughs> it's okay. They haven't even walked mm. off the field yet. It's okay. They'll still make the playoffs at 8-8, eight and eight, which is impressive. And people bitch about too many MLS teams mm. making the playoffs. Yeah, well. Yeah. There's that. That's, yeah. Too uh, many. That's a lot of God, why tough. am I failing at this? Mm. Favorite, mm. favorite sneakers? Oh, Converse. Got to go Just Converse. Just standard. Yeah. standard. Jocks? Yeah, Jocks. Lo- yeah. Low top or high top? Low top. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm a low top. There's so many people that are high top, and I love the low top. Eh, I just, they don't do anything for me, really. I, I like just don't this. like the the weird just thing hanging around your ankle yeah. doing nothing. Like, there's no support there, so it's what's the point? Favorite sounder? Well, I got Ozzy on my, uh, my uh, authentic that I bought this year, so I've got to go okay. with Ozzy. Nice. Of Ozzy yeah. All-time Ozzy. Yeah. That's what mm-hmm. you're going with. Okay, That's so fo- follow-up, because I remembered one. Uh, when you play FIFA, what team do you play with? Well, it's either Santos or Arsenal. Okay. Yeah. You're a gooner, huh? Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. My brother uh, you know, hooked me onto them. He's responsible for that one for sure. That's cool. Yeah. I still like to break out 14 <laughs> and play Chivas versus Chivas. <laughs> <laughs> Just like full on blowouts. <laughs> like you got to make Dan Kennedy look really bad. It just ends poorly. <laughs> what a kid he So did, did uh, <laughs> nothing. He's amazing. Did Kubo Torres do the uh, robot in that? I don't think he does, but I think there probably is a robot uh, that you that could, you could do in there. Yeah. Uh, anywho, hey, look, drunk people. So we got a couple minutes left. Um, we derailed a while and did yes. some questions, which was fun. Um, so Sounders tomorrow. So here at the Berliner. We have been told to get here early. They're not booking tables. So get here as soon as you can. I join think it's join like Labara. R- B- Bara will be here. That is correct. Uh, it, if I'm not mistaken, isn't a certain individual going to be here? James Woolard uh, will be here. Wh- wh- why does that name uh, sound familiar? He's the person that he's says the things sultry like... sounds of... Uh, number 10... Uh-huh. <laughs> Nicolas Lodero. Kind of just like that, except more effective. More more English. Um, And more English. So anyway, he will be here tomorrow. Less Hackensack, more. With his dulcet tones. Birmingham. (laughs) Hackensack, good reference. Um, (laughs) Not at all accurate, but I'll I'll go with it. Sorry, Uh, Weehawken. I'll own it. (laughs) Hoboken. Just stop talking, really. (laughs) Um, So tomorrow, uh, 6.30... Ish. TV kick, mm-hmm. 648 real life kick. James Woolard, Berliner, uh, get a table. Uh, I believe there are going to be TVs outside and inside with the sound oh. on. Uh, the dishwasher will apparently be working. <laughs> it's fixed. Um, it's it, fixed. it is fixed. Yeah. Could. Mm-hmm. So if you missed tonight, the dishwasher, unhappy oh. earlier. Working good now. It was having which, a moment. That's actually why Mark only had one beer because he didn't want to make the dishwasher it, work. The, the, the dishwasher yeah. just came into Monday and it was like I can't even. So it was like most people. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so that's tomorrow night. A- uh, any other good places to watch the game? Uh, ECS official viewings at Fuel. Mm-hmm. A number of us be. will be there. Yeah. N- Mickey will be there not reviewing legal documents. <laughs> so if you want to know about the legal really documents. I'm really hoping they are posted by yeah. like noon and then <laughs> I can do all that. <laughs> Follow him is. earlier in the day yes. at Turner ESQ. That's kind of like Bill S. Preston Esquire, except actually an attorney. Uh, so Turner ESQ on the Twitters. Uh, so if, if any of that stuff gets out tomorrow, 
Uh, Mickey mm. will probably derail whatever he's doing yes. in order to review yeah. it. As long as it's before 6.30 or cool. 6.48. Or before <laughs> you have a beverage. Yes. I would Just also add yes. you could join possibly me. I don't know if I'll be there yet. I haven't decided if I'm going to stay downtown or not. If I don't, you can find me at Flatstick Pub. Shocking, I know. Uh, have you ever been there? No. They are a partner bar for the Sounders, and they will have the game on every TV and the sound on in the bar. Is that a real thing? That's a real thing. Cool. Isn't that a Coog bar? It is a Coog it is. bar. Yeah. Owned and do, operated do by Coogs. I do enjoy it. It's a fun They're bar. Quag, quagging yeah. it up. Yeah, quagging it up. Yeah. Go Quags. So that's for you, Dave. I think that's all we got. Any other questions in the house from people who are probably chilly? <laughs> blankets out over there. I see it. There are blankets here at the Berliner. Cool. Yeah, the only other thing is uh, the Miami thing is still up in the air. That, <laughs> that announcement. Same, same as it ever was. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> 60 to 90 days <laughs> is the <laughs> announcement. There are a number one. of things with yeah. the Miami thing, right? When did so, they announce that? Like 2012? 20, 2014, 2013? They announced it before Either Atlanta. Either way forever ago. They announced it before Atlanta. That's uh, how long ago. I mean, I'm looking to take that Fort Lauderdale direct Alaska flight yeah. a couple more times. Yeah. We, we hadn't even won our third, ML, or our third <laughs> Open Cup <laughs> when they fucking announced this. Yeah, it's been a long time. It's going to be, a, my, my, based on my calculations, it'll be at least until March uh, before they get a ruling on the appeal. We, we will win mm. the Champions yeah, League we'll be before, yes, before, yes, before, before they announcement. play a game. That's just before if. they get a ruling. A on ruling, the field, yeah. <laughs> which can then be appealed to the Supreme Court of the state of Florida. That's exhausting. Yeah, it is. It's, it's ridiculous. Because, you know, that yeah. seems like a worthy use of the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. Do you have any other legal things you'd mm -hmm. like to tell people? Uh, no, not really. I think, yeah. The, the ones I've been really following is obviously the USSF, NASL, and the Miami thing to a lesser extent. Um, that one, the guy who's suing is just a legal troll. He just sues. As one does. Yeah, yes. I mean. <laughs> he just sues the city um, because he doesn't like uh, what's going on. And he, he got his butt handed to him in this case. So Beckham actually, you know, he did everything he was supposed to do. So uh, they will eventually win. But he will drag it out as long as possible, which will drag this process out as long as possible. As one does. And they will probably not be able to announce Miami to MLS until probably, I would say, June. Okay. Mm. Question from the internet. Internet, really? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, the notorious RBG is, uh, <laughs> I think fantasy Supreme court would be a wonderful yes. thing. It would be like the slowest league of all time, but interesting. Uh, so one last question and then, uh, we can, we can bail, uh, Columbus. Thoughts? Oh, Oh, on the, the move. It's, uh, it's, it's not good. Obviously. Um, I'm a, I was a little surprised that they had their meeting last week. Um, and based on what's been reported, that they went into the meeting with MLS and they said, we are not going to make any proposals until you commit to being here. Right. Which is a ridiculous position to take because, you know, it's just as an attorney, when you walk into a negotiation, the other side says, we're not going to do anything until you, you agree to our demands. You're just like... Well, what are we doing here? What's the point of this meeting? So, you know, I, under I completely understand their, uh, this uh, city of Columbus's position um, on what uh, Precourt is doing, who is an absolute ass. Um, and it's obvious he had planned to move them the there whole time. essentially right. the yeah. whole time. But if they are going to make some effort to stop him from doing that, they, it was incumbent upon them to make, to put a proposal out there for how they are going to assist him in keeping the team there to say we are not going to put that out there until you agree not to move the team is not anything any person in that in a negotiation would ever do it's 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 ludicrous uh, i think they made there's some proposals coming out there um you know uh, again that sets aside the fact that he's whether he should be moving the team in the first place which he shouldn't be 
And if he's that unhappy, he can sell it to somebody else and go. Who will the, keep it in yeah, Columbus? Yeah, who will Columbus, so. and he can go get in the expansion process. But under those, under the current circumstances where you are, you can't go into a meeting and say, "I'm not going to talk to you until you agree to not move the team." It's just not something anybody would ever do in a so, negotiation. So, two follow-ups: uh, if if Columbus moves to Austin. <clears throat> What does San Antonio do? Oh, well, they are going to be like a ex-scorned. They are going to bring hellfire and brimstone down on MLS. Uh, based, you know, I've, Salt I've, Earth. Yeah. Salt Earth. Yeah. They're going to, yeah, it's going to be guns blazing. Um, they're, you know, based on what I've read, and I've, I've actually kept up with that a little bit, but the uh, the whoever's in charge down there, Judge Nelson Wolf or something like that, he's... It's a weird designation for him, but he's already he's asked the uh, prosecutor's office to look into whether there have been fraud or some type of other crime. No, I'm good. Um, like, like whether uh, the city was fraudulently induced into investing into Toyota Stadium. Uh, and so, I expect if they think they have even the smallest chance of making a criminal case, they will file criminal charges. Okay. And someone from MLS is going to be in a San Antonio courthouse being mugshotted Lovely. and booked. Well, because there definitely mm. appeared to be a, uh, a goal of MLS to have as many teams as yeah. possible yeah. want a team. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's big time puffery, but it's, I've, I know 100%. what it costs for like, design firms to make stadium designs forget the digital they've got physical designs mm -hmm. and whatnot mm -hmm. like tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. went into multiple places if i'm sacramento race now i'm oh, super, super pissed, pissed. I'm, oh, i was pissed livid. two years ago yeah let alone now yeah. it's um, yeah. it's obvious to me that they felt that sacramento was essentially a backup to other more attractive bids the girl next door versus the cheerleader. They were getting five <laughs> digits yeah. years ago yeah. at mm -hmm. that place. Yeah. So it's just extremely frustrating. Yeah. It is. They, I mean, by all metrics, they deserve to, to be in. They're actually, I still think there's a decent chance they get in because uh, I'm not. Sacramento, we're talking. Sacramento. Yeah. I am not convinced that Cincinnati has all their ducks in a row quite yet. The, as recently as today, that. They were trying to get them to use Paul Brown Stadium yeah. where the Bengals play, which is just not going to nope. happen. Zero chance of that. Yeah. No. Um, and they haven't really done everything they need to do on either the Cincinnati side or the uh, the Northern Kentucky Newport side. So they're still a little iffy to me. Nashville, I think, is in. Um, so it's just a ma it's I think it's between Cincinnati. That seems and like a real in, right? Sacramento. Yeah, I think yeah. I think Nashville's in. Dude, Nash Vegas yeah. all day. And really, they only have three bids at this point that they are even comfortable with. Uh, Indiana's done, or Indianapolis is done. Uh, Charlotte's done. Raleigh's done. Uh, Detroit wants to go into Ford Field. In, uh, MLS isn't going to go That's a no-go. That's a no-go. Uh, Tampa, they're not thrilled with that site. They don't like the ownership as far as the amount of money he has, and they're not a great or sure on the location as well even though the view would be fantastic it's just you know that stadium i think yeah. they're not going to go for uh phoenix hasn't gotten their ducks in a row uh san diego has to wait for the vote in 2018 so they are definitely out for the next two bids um and i think that i'm probably missing one who's that uh, soccer mcsockerson is that the yes name? yeah footy yeah. mcfootface footy mcfootface yeah so they're i think they only have th there are only three bids that are even close which is Cincy, nashville and sacramento do you think they do them all really quickly cuz you've got <clears throat> odd number team now so yeah. i could totally see them turning one well, in Jeff, and then just to boom, get boom. out of this odd yeah. number thing uh Je there's a reporter from uh, minneapolis or minnesota jeff and i can't remember his last name uh uh, which is terrible, uh, but he reported Just that. Make one up. Yeah. His last name's terrible, or that you can't I, remember. Terrible, I can't Jeff Terrible. Okay. Uh, <laughs> he reported that Nashville's already in, and they're going to be in 2019. And MLS pushed back really hard on him. I, I think it's going to happen. I think it's. I'm 
fairly, you know, they're they're set. They're good to go. I mean, they the could they play was, at LP or whatever they're yeah, called. Uh, they now? could play in uh, the, uh, the Titan Stadium yeah. if they needed to. It's uh, downtown. It's a great spot. Yeah, you so can they walk could absolutely from play there. the Honky Tonks and then walk back to the Honky Tonks yeah. and still not know where you are. O- Oilers Stadium, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I think his reporting is he got massive pushback and like <laughs> he got like some s- fairly significant. Uh, con- yeah, I wouldn't say consequences, but uh, he he took a hit. But I think his reporting is going to end up being true, and so okay. I think I think Nashville's in for sure. Uh, and so it's down to Cincy and Sacramento. Um, I'm not sure which one MLS likes more, uh, but I think the Cincy is kind of dependent on the Columbus situation as well, um, because I think it's fairly clear that they don't fancy two teams in Ohio, even though that would be a very interesting rivalry uh, right. for, for derbies and such. What if we go to 40 and just have pro rel? <laughs> I don't even want to touch that. <laughs> Ted is listening right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so one last question. Yeah. Um, what do you think the odds are that Clay Bennett steps in at the last minute oh, God. and Columbus <laughs> goes to Oklahoma <laughs> City? <laughs> uh, I, just turned it, I just turned Tom's mic off. Yes. No, seriously. I, I do have um, a circle back on, on yeah. Columbus, though. Uh, Jason Davis posted this earlier, and I thought it was fairly interesting. So Columbus posted a picture about 24 hours, Columbus, Toronto, claim glory, blah, blah, blah. And the picture is yeah. literally just three of their players, and it says tomorrow. And his comment was, seriously, what's with the totally generic, nonspecific graphics yeah. for it being a... Championship. A, uh, yeah. a oh, conference man. final. Yeah. And my, my first thought was... On that was well, they've got one foot out the door. Oh, I think they. I think it's it is actually a Clay Bennett situation in that he is already set to go unless Columbus gives him an offer oh, yeah. that he's, they absolutely can't. He's refuse. ready to rock and roll. So you know, again, Bennett said he would stay here if uh, the city had built him a five hundred million dollar palace. But otherwise, he's like, eh, well, he's I'll he's leave. ready to hold. So I think Precourt like, is on the. I think he's on his way out there too, which is weird because I don't know that I don't know that Austin is set to give him what he wants. Just from a logistical standpoint, it's just, they just weird. Haven't, yeah, but he's certainly ready to make make MLS All Star Game in Austin during Austin City Limits. Just the fucking mm-hmm. thing. I I, I got to tell you, I love Austin. It's, oh, it's a great. super fun town. It's a great town. I love it a lot more than Columbus, and Columbus is actually a wonderful. College football town, like Flyover State. It's no, I mean, there's stuff to do there. Like <laughs> uh, the the it's hockey the one team city does in well. Texas, I would like there's enjoy things going too. on, but Austin's a whole nother place. It's it's just a different thing. If you want to talk though about attracting people to events, kind of on the fly, Austin does a really good. Yeah, job that's of very it. true. Like and it's closed, very it's younger. It would isn't be it? like if they closed, I don't know, half of Capitol Hill and made it. Just, you know, no cars, walk around, yeah. every bar is open yeah. till 2 or 3 or 4 a.m. Like, that's, like, every night, basically. It's a, it's a younger city as far as yeah, the I mean, people I understand there, why right? they are interested in going yeah. there. Uh, well, no, there's money. No pro teams, money. Uh, I mean, their demographics right. match up. Um, even though it's not the biggest city, it's growing, and it'll probably continue to grow. It's weird, so, though. It's not a soccer town. Yeah. Uh, although, um, UT, if UT is going to put them up, yeah. Sure. I, yeah. Okay. Sure. I mean, you're trading one college town for another, yeah. essentially, uh, with better demographics, I suppose. Uh, is that enough? NCAA well, would be stadium? setting up that, uh, that Ohio State UT game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, it's, a, it's just a different place. You know, I mean, as far as the college town thing, they both yeah. have that going on. But from a like entertainment and what people do, it's a different place. Absolutely. So it, it it's be, polar opposites. It's going to yeah. be really interesting. On the flip, you know, if you're like, I have no interest in uh, in seeing that happen from a uh, supporter point. From a yeah. supporter standpoint, I think it's horrible. From a would I go to Austin away every year? Yeah. Hell yeah, that's a resounding hell like yeah. It's not even a. It's not even a question. Aside from the fact that there are multiple directs I, <laughs> from I, Seattle. I'd book it now, except for we won't get the schedule until February. So Nice. Anyway, so... 
Mickey, thank you for joining us. Oh, a pleasure. Uh, that was super enlightening. Um, there is a quiz online later. Yes. Probably not. Uh, Mark is writing the quiz. Yeah. No, I already failed it. Um, one question we didn't ask. Uh, what's your karaoke song? Oh, let's see. Uh, I've never done karaoke. You're a so smart I have man. No you are a smart song. man. Yes. I, I, you're just, I like how you're just extricating yourself from this question. You're like, Brilliant. nor am I going to volunteer yeah, one. That will never happen. That's okay. I've never done it, never will. That is, that is my uh, number nice. one so uh, goal in life. So we're out. I don't think we're going to have a show next week, but we'll see. I would prefer not. Yeah, the word on the gone. street is that there's no show. I'll be traveling. I there's will some other stuff have going just on. gotten back from the East Coast. Yeah, Mark will be yeah. still drunk from Canadian whiskey or something. Yeah. And uh, and so on. So we'll keep you posted on that. Uh, but we will definitely have a show the following Monday. Uh, that what is it? The third, fourth, fourth of uh, yeah, fourth. Pre- fourth of December. MLS yeah. Cup. Yeah. Knock on wood. Jinx, jinx, jinx. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you to the Berliner. Remember, you could be here tomorrow, pre six thirty, for Western Conference Finals match number one. Hey, we didn't even get. Oh, you don't have. Any- we could figure that out. We though. didn't get a cheers yeah. on on air. Yeah. Well, I can cheers, Mickey. You can yes. cheers, Mickey. I got a little bit left. All right. Cheers. Night, y'all. Thanks, everybody. Ship it.